Chaksu un militam yenatas my Sri Guru Venamaha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale. Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve. Gaudavani Pacharine. Near Visesa Sunyavadi Paschatya de Sitarine Mancha Kalpa to Rubescha, Kripa Sindhu, Vajra Petita Nam Pavane Bio, Vaishnave Bio, Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Sri Advaita Gadar Har Sivasudi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, yesterday we read one article written by His Holiness Shiva Ram Maharaj. The article was titled Sabda, Spiritual Sound Vibration. Today, we'll read another of his articles. It's called Chanting Quality Japa. We'll be focusing uh, today on Japa tomorrow. We will do a special program in honor of Bhakti Charu Maharaj because tomorrow is his actual appearance day in the world. So the entire world will be, the entire Iskan world and others will be honoring Maharaj on his appearance day. So we'll do something in that regard. And then Friday begins Purushottam Mas, which is the holiest month in the Vaishnav calendar, which appears on every 27 and a half months. It's considered the extra month in the sense that uh, to balance out the lunar and solar calendars, um, we, we see the solar calendars are larger than the lunar calendars. So every 27 and a half months, an extra month is placed within the lunar cycle, and that is the Puru So, um, and there's a wonderful pastime story for the origin of Puru Shotamas, and we'll also speak about its many, many spiritual benefits. That begins on Friday the 18th. So, we'll, and then after that, we'll continue that week, that week from the 17th, starting tomorrow to the 24th, is uh, Japa or Kirtan week, Holy Name week, a week for uh, going deeper into the holy name, which is the essence of our spiritual practice. So they will touch on one, another subject called quality japa from Shivara Maharaja's writings. I'll read and comment simultaneously. Uh, and it's titled, The Real Criteria for Japa is Quality Time. Of course, if you stay in the temple, that's ensured. Uh, some devotees have other activities during that time. That is, we're talking about temple devotees now, which is not fair to them and definitely not fair to the holy name. While certain services have to go on, such as pujari on the altar, kitchen, taking care of the cows, Devotees should, as much as possible, stay together and chant and become really absorbed. That's the main thing. And this will be the foundation for our progress in chanting. And Rupa Goswami says we must cultivate the holy name by cultivating the qualities that are needed and the attitude to chant the holy name. Here, some practical advice. 
generally devotees should be able to sit and chant Hare Krishna. Kneeling, kneeling down is good if you have a tendency to fall asleep. But one thing for sure is that japa should not mean to be a struggle to stay awake. So if you're struggling to stay awake during japa, that means you're not rested enough. Or for some reason, you're becoming distracted by too many thoughts, which causes your mind to become tired. <laughs> if we are struggling, we are not listening to the holy name. Circumambulating Tulsi Devi while chanting is good. And Bhakti Rubin Nota and Srila Prabhupada recommended that devotees sit down while chanting. Of course, you can also walk, but Maharaj says here when we are walking, we have to navigate, and that navigation requires attention and also energy, and it can distract one from chanting. The ideal is that we sit down, close our eyes, and concentrate on the beautiful sound vibration. But if in any way we do it, the concentration be, should be there. So whether you walk or you sit, or you circumambulate the deities, Tulsi, you have, concentration is the most important thing. Rupa Goswami explains that if we're not hearing the holy name, Rupa Goswami explains, I'm sorry, that if just by hearing the holy name is not enough. It's not enough just to hear the holy name. And Rupa Goswami explains, we may reread that verse yesterday in our discussion. I do not know how many, how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, it appears to dance within the mouth. And then one desires to have many mouths. When the name enters the holes of the ears, we desire many millions of ears. And when that holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, it conquers the activities of the mind and all the senses become inert. So here, this is chanting in ecstasy. He's tasting the sweetness of the holy name and he's thinking, well, there's more than just hearing, it's tasting. Because there's a sweetness in Krishna's name, just like when we eat something sweet, that sweetness uh, it stimulates our senses. So Krishna's name is also sweet. And that sweetness inspires the mind and opens up the heart. And uh, devotees want to chant more. So it's not simply enough to hear the name. We have to develop that taste. After devotees have been chanting consistently, say for 10 to 15 years, Maharaj says, they should be able to experience ecstasy when chanting Hare Krishna. So he gives a little bit of his own formula. That if you're chanting in between 10 and 15 years, you should be tasting the sweetness of the holy name. That does not mean rolling on the ground, but that one is satisfied by the sweetness of the name. That name does not ramble and go from one, and the mind doesn't ramble from go from one thing to another. And that one does not talk to others while chanting. And uh, bad thoughts do not come into the mind. And if they are, they are immediately discarded. And one does not become sleepy or distracted. So the name actually inspires the mind. So these are some of the symptoms that don't happen we don't, we're not going from thought to thought. We are, the mind is being inspired. We're not getting sleepy or distracted. Bad thoughts 
are easily removed if they come. Chanting Hare Krishna is what should be done during japa, and devotees should feel great satisfaction and happiness, a sense of spiritual well-being, and a strength that will guide them through the day and through the natural obstacles that come from household life, that come from preaching and many other obstacles. Bhagavatam says that we can actually satisfy ourselves by chanting. If we're not getting the, the, the satisfaction from the chanting, we'll look for satisfaction somewhere else, maybe in some form of entertainment or something that distracts our mind to something in this world. These things, whether they're gross, distractions or subtle, lead us into the material energy. And then if they're too much, then that can lead to wrong thinking and wrong activities, which cause one may cause one to slip in devotional service. So chanting is cultivation, chanting is practice. And one of the most important things, and Prabhupada emphasized this a lot, and that is the pronunciation of the sound should be clear. Um, we have done experiment, experiments in our Krishna consciousness by putting a tape player next to someone while they're performing japa, and then later on playing it back. That tape playing, uh, some so many times reveals that the devotees are not chanting either the whole mantra, they miss sometimes uh, some part of the mantra, or uh, they actually don't pronounce the mantra clear. So be, be aware of that. And one of the ways you can overcome that is that when you begin your japa, chant very methodically, clearly, not fast, but where you can hear clearly and go from each, go from each word to word in a very clear and distinct way. As you connect with your sound, that connection will cause you to become more attentive to the chanting. And as intention, attention increases, then the sweetness will start to automatically start to appear. So one of the ways that we start to chant wrongly or we chant missing names is that we don't listen. We have to hear, and hearing should be directed by the mind. It's not that we can just chant and hear automatically. The mind has to be connected to the sound where it brings the process of hearing in. Uh, the mind says, let me hear this nicely. Let me focus on this sound. The idea is to develop a task, attachment for chanting because developing attachment for chanting means developing an attachment for Krishna. As we know, Krishna's name is Krishna. So that attachment develops. So after chanting, say maybe five years, 10 years, or maybe even 15 years, we should ask ourselves, where am I? Am I chanting Hare Krishna? What is the quality of my chanting? What is the enthusiasm that I bring in when I chant? If we're not feeling uh, satisfied with the practice and we don't know where we are in our chanting, then that becomes a concern. Let me see what I need to do to increase 
the way the, the why we're focusing so much emphasis is because everything in this Krishna consciousness process springs from the chanting of the holy name. The quality of your chanting is the quality of your devotional practice. It's synonymous. Although we might find great uh, happiness and some inspiration in doing other things such as reading or worshiping the deity or even doing a particular service, uh, because the, the holy name has been empowered in this age by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be the means for self-realization. Therefore, everything that we, we are active in is, is centered around the quality of our chanting. There should be an urgency. For householders who cannot go to the temple, Maharaj says, quality time should be found. The best time is in the early morning before the children wake up or before works begin, before all the passionate activities of the day take place. And in order to do that, one has to take rest early enough. This is where we have our problems. We stay awake too late at night doing things that we want to do or like to do. Best to take rest early. Um, I've been asking devotees to, to make it a point to take rest no later than 10 o'clock every night, no matter what. Some devotees have been following. Please shut off your uh, your uh, your audio. Janava, turn off your audio. We're getting only feedback now. Okay, so I've been asking devotees try to take rest before 10. And some devotees have taken that instruction seriously. And I'm seeing, and they're also indicating that their spiritual life is getting much better. Uh, the depth of our spiritual life is getting going to bed late and getting up late. The early morning hours are conducive to spiritual life. And at the same time, if we get up too late, then the day's activities are, are there already. When we get up, we don't have time. We don't have quality time for chanting. So make with this uh, present situation in the world where we're not moving around too much as we used to, then here's an opportunity to re-regulate our life, take rest at a decent time. Um, and uh, personally, I'll just let you know, I'm taking rest at, the latest I take rest is at 10, but that's rare. I usually take rest by 9.15, 9.30. I'm hoping to take rest by eight, nine o'clock as it gets closer and closer to the colder season. And hopefully I want to get up at 2.30 every morning. Then I find that I have some, I have nice time for japa. Everything is quiet. I can focus. And then I finish my 16 rounds and then I'm ready and eager and feel inspired to take on the services that are ready, that are there waiting. So yeah. So chanting is not something that is isolated. It's connected to everything in our daily schedule. And therefore the early morning hours have a special spiritual uh, potency to it. And therefore take advantage of that 
by taking rest in a decent time before 10 and um, getting up where you have enough time to chant your rounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to actually manage and build our lives around what facilitates our chanting of Hare Krishna. This is a powerful statement. We have to actually manage and build our lives around what facilitates our chanting of Hare Krishna. So people might say, well, I have to build my life around my daily work schedule. I have to build my life around my household duties. But here, we have to build our life around what facilitates our chanting of Hare Krishna. It may not be easy, and we, we might find it difficult to do. But seriously speaking, it's what we need to do. Maharaj says, I often see Grihastas working people who have to leave home at 6 or 6.30. It's not an easy thing. It's actually so difficult. Nonetheless, everyone has to take some form of morning program and quality time for japa. It may not be as long as we want it to be, but if we rise early, take bath, chant four rounds, better eight rounds, and then structure the day so that we can also chant more quality rounds. Often devotees ask what they can do to change or improve their habits in chanting. Now Maharaj is going to say something, which is really what is being said by the Acharyas, especially Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur. He says, one very powerful thing to do is to take a day off and dedicate your life time to chanting 64 rounds or 108 rounds, or 192 rounds. If you do that, it will be an experience both in seeing how much your mind wanders and what it means to chant. It will give you a connection with the Holy Name, a strength and insight into the wonders, potency, and beauty of hearing and chanting. So give it a try. Just take a day off and make that day just a day for chanting. If you find it too difficult to chant all day straight, then what you can do is that you can mix your chanting in with reading, chant for some time, read a little bit, and then go back to chanting and continue that cycle. If you have that determination, it will change your life. Krishna will give you the intelligence and it help you to improve and correct in your japa. We have to show Krishna we care, we're serious. And Krishna consciousness is a serious process. It's the, it's the most serious thing we can do because if we can go back home, back to Godhead, which is the goal, then all our problems are solved. We reach eternal life with Krishna in the spiritual world. Otherwise, we have to keep coming back life after life and until we actually reach that stage of perfect spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. So chanting remains and is always the most important part of our spiritual practice. Therefore, it must be given the most attention, the most cultivation, the most emphasis. <laughs> okay, so I'll stop there.
We'll take questions now from anyone. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Agoris to Srila Prabhupada and Agoris to you. Um, when you said that uh, we should uh, arrange uh, our lives around uh, chanting, it really made me think because uh, I, I make this mistake that uh, I organize my life around my services. And uh, by intelligence, I understand that chanting comes first, but somehow, um, I unconsciously give a bigger priority to my services. Uh, do you have any suggestion? What could I do to? Uh, to yeah, I used to do. Yeah, I what I do is I used to do the same thing, but now I just chant sixteen rounds before I do anything. Mm -hmm. And even if I have to push breakfast back to later, I'll do sixteen rounds first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've come to the point of that now I can I cannot do anything but chant 16 rounds before I do anything else. Uh, unless there's an extreme uh, emergency, which in my present state of of life, there doesn't seem to be one before before the virus was going on, I would I did have these emergencies with travel and uh, various things. But now these emergencies are not there any longer. So I just chant 16 rounds first. And my breakfast time will, will vary according to when I finish. Thank, thank you but very now, much. But, but by doing that, I've also found time before breakfast to read Srimad Bhagavatam too. So now I have time, I read an hour before Bhagavatam breakfast, and then I also chant 16 rounds. So between those two things, breakfast is, is always pushed back a little, little later. Maybe it's, I'll take breakfast at 8.30 or sometimes nine, but the rounds and reading Bhagavatam are first. I won't change that because for me, that's the foundation of everything. And then I, get, then I look forward to my services throughout the day. It's not that uh, before I remember when I didn't finish my rounds early, I'm always thinking, when will I finish my rounds? Should I squeeze around here? Should I do four, a couple rounds there? Should I do this service now or should I chant? So it becomes a whole mind boggling program of juggling because the rounds are still unfinished. Of course, we don't chant the finish, but Prabhupada also mentions the importance of chanting 16 rounds early. It has a certain spiritual potency that makes the rest of the day um, a welcome challenge to use a term in other words it's not things don't become overwhelming anymore if we have any difficulties it's we're equipped to deal with them uh, yeah it it sounds very inspiring i i hope i i was thinking that maybe i i should uh, try to do it like this because Lately, I had one day when I couldn't chant at all in the morning. And my day was so terrible that I, I really realized that I, even if I don't chant 16 rounds, uh, even if I chant something, uh, it, uh, it really affects my day. So mm -hmm. I, can, I can understand the importance. It's just uh, also I need strength <laughs> to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well regulate your your time that you get up at the same time every day and then you can work with that that schedule to adjust 
where you can get it to an ideal that works for you the best. But start with, an, with a time of taking rest and a time of getting up. And just chat. Even if you can't finish 16 rounds, at least try to work towards that. I'm simply answering your question in relationship to what I I know is the success early rounds. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Viva. She's good. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Vivek here. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Maharaj, I like um, I agree with you that uh, whenever like from when I have started early to bed and early to rise, it has improved the quality of uh, japa. And when I like many times I have seen and observed that uh, when I finish like all the rounds in the morning. When I actually finish, I feel that now actually I'm getting the taste, real taste of the japa. But because of the like few other activity, I stop like thinking that, okay, now japa is like all 16 is done. So let me finish other activity. But rather than happiness, sometimes I feel like I actually like Krishna gave me that taste, but I could not utilize like by doing more japa. So is this like something? good or bad like I, of course like i should try to do more but because of other activity i stop there uh, well, i am not making a mistake here your your numerical vow is 16 rounds yes maharaj yeah so make that your focus if you can do more that's wonderful but sig try to do 16 good rounds quality it's better to do the minimum with quality than try to add. And then somehow, because we're adding, we're sacrificing some quality in that. So uh, work on quality and keep your numerical vow. And if you can do more, that's nice. It's all a matter of scheduling. We find if we have a schedule that we have a, an understanding how to work with, we can adjust. But get it down where, where certain parts of the day is never changeable, such like getting up in the morning, going to bed at night, taking prasadam at the same time, chanting our job at the same time. And of course, if you have a work schedule, but to make your sadhana, uh, the foundation for everything you do in the sense that you give that priority. Devotees have failed to understand that they put their spiritual practice on the same level of their material needs. And they, they make the adjustments in an equal way. But you have to understand Spiritual life is like a tree. This is a good analogy. And the roots of the tree are the most important part of the tree. So when the root is getting the nourishment, the tree, all the tree benefits. So when the root of our spiritual life is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And so when we're watering the root regularly, then the rest of the tree will also benefit from that watering process. And the rest of the tree is our life's responsibilities and activities both in our spiritual life and whatever else is needed in order to maintain ourself and our family. Those things are not separate from our spiritual life, nor are they equal. Our spiritual life is first because that is, that is our our existence, we are spiritual beings. And therefore, our happiness comes through our connection with Krishna. So keep that sadhana, early morning sadhana strong. And if you can increase it, that's nice. But most important is keep quality 
in whatever in your spiritual practice or work on quality work on hearing better work on uh, developing the proper mood of chanting which means offering our heart to krishna in devotion uh, it's called chanting is cultivation of our relationship with krishna You want to, when you want to develop a relationship with someone you don't know or someone who is distant from you, you see what it means to, to develop that relationship and you do those things which will bring about that relationship. Same with Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Lord Easter Srila Prabhupada, of Lord's Dear Holiness. Thank you so much for the wonderful class, uh, Guru Maharaj. And um, I had the same question as uh, uh, Radha Vinodini Mataji, um, and the same problem. I even I, I used to think that uh, I have to finish all my, um, I have to concentrate more on the services which I do. Um, then I can fit in Japa in any place. I, I used to think like that. But nowadays, uh, I started uh, waking up early and doing uh, 16 rounds before seven o'clock. Um, but uh, Guru Maharaj, I feel that uh, uh, if I finish my 16 rounds before seven o'clock and later I'm unable to do any extra rounds some days, uh, at that time I feel that there is no connection or I am not remembering Krishna Guru Maharaj. So, so what do you recommend Guru Maharaj? Um, well, wh why is there no connection? That doesn't make sense connection is there you can remember Krishna anytime any place anywhere during yeah, any but, kind uh, of activity yeah. of course you might you might be saying that the the potency of your connection with Krishna is not as the same as when you are chanting in the morning that may be so but if you're serving according to your responsibilities, both on the spiritual level and in relationship to your family needs, then you're connected in devotional service. But sometimes, like what I do, sometimes when I have a little break, I just pick up the beads and start chanting. I don't need to think about, well, what am I got to do now? Yeah, that's the tendency we have. The tendency is that doing things produces results. And therefore, we look towards life success. We see success in life by how much we do and what we get done, as opposed to uh, how much we're developing, both in our character and in our relationship with Krishna. That's not something you do, it's something you awaken through spiritual practice like that. So the materialistic tendency is based on the fruit of that, uh, fruit of mindset that doing is more important than praying. We have to do, we might think, well, if I don't do, then something is lost. But if I don't pray, nothing is lost. <laughs> if we think like that, then we are simply on the mental platform. We don't see the connection between our spiritual practice and our day-to-day -day activities in this, in our life. It's a very direct and complete connection. So, um, if you need to, just stop your daily activities for a little while, pick up your beads and chant a few rounds and get again inspired, mm. if you feel that need. Yes, good matter. Otherwise, try to remember Krishna throughout the day. When you're cooking, when you're cleaning, when you're taking care of the children, think of Krishna. 
Yes, Guru Maharaj, I listen to lectures. Um, I listen to lectures. I try to read books. Uh, all that I do, but uh, but Japa is different. I feel Guru Maharaj like connecting uh, to Krishna directly through Japa. Uh, so once I finish the sixteen rounds, my mind is set. Like I finished the sixteen rounds, so I am focused on in other activities. So that's what I want to build up, Guru Maharaj. Like uh, as you said, whenever I get a break, I have to chant more. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I know you want to taste more of the Krishna conscious practice, but or the Krishna consciousness uh, activity, but that takes time. The yes. taste will come if you remain steady. Mm -hmm. Steadiness brings the taste. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Do we have any other comments or questions? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I have a question, but not related to the topic. Um... What is, what's the question about? Um, it's about uh, Saraswati. Because she told me uh, in the school uh, she would like to go to uh, a Protestant religion. Uh, they have once a week or twice a week. And uh, I don't know if I should allow her to go there or mm. just leave it. No, keep her, keep her connected with Krishna conscious activities. Okay, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, they say you have to be strict with children between the age of 5 and 15. If you're mm -hmm. not strict, they will do anything they want to do, and then their life will be spoiled, because these, these are the years where they formulate their values You come up with some reason to convince her that it's more important to stay with Krishna. Uh, she just said uh, it's practical for her because she has a friend there and it, it, it's funny. Yeah, just be Okay. Sri Devi, you had a question. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Um, yes, Guru Maharaj, this is a question on chanting. I find that I'm chanting, but some distracting thought will come. And after that, before I know it even, I'm busy making a conversation with this person or making a plan or doing something in my mind. And I'm chanting at the same time, but my mind is somewhere else. And it takes me a while to understand I have gone away from Krishna. And then I have to again bring my mind back. So this happens pretty often. And I was wondering if you have uh, some tips for me to eliminate this side yeah, chat. Just, yeah, just concentrate. You have to concentrate more on the holy name. So the techniques that help you to concentrate should be should be employed. For instance, Sachi Nandana Maharaj has given a nice technique, which I find it is very helpful. Uh, listen to the heart of the first hare on every mantra. So program your mind to listen to the first hare on every mantra. And then even if your mind goes off, it can't go off for a few seconds. You'll be right back again. Everyone's mind goes off. The idea is what's going to get it, get it back to the sound. So here's one technique. Listen to the first hare. What I sometimes do is I visualize uh, the, the mantra in my mind while I'm chanting it. 
I try to see the mantra, not on the wall or written, but in the mind. And that helps to keep the mind connected to the sound. The thing is you have to work on connect, keeping that concentration until you start picking up the sound vibration and then it doesn't go anymore and then it doesn't start to go away so easy anymore. So every time it goes away, bring it back. But if you let it go away so long and you're formulating ideas, and then all of a sudden, um, yeah, you're out, you're chanting, but you're not hearing. But the hearing is going on in a more subtle form but not, you're not consciously hearing. If you're not consciously hearing, then you can't keep your concentration on, on the chanting. Only when you consciously hear can you keep, you keep concentration. Okay, thank you Guru Maharaj that uh, is something I can try, but it's hard because my mind is always going planning services. So in my mind, I'm planning services even while I'm chanting. But that's hey, that happens to me too. That happens to me too, but I recognize it. How fast you recognize it is how fast you'll bring your mind back to the sound. If you don't recognize your mind is doing that, then you'll stay off, recognize it. If it goes off, just, oh, bring it back. If you don't recognize your mind is going off, then it'll just continue to go, go off. Yes, yeah, that's right. Thank you. I'll focus yeah. on the song. Hare Krishna Maharaj, it's Vishal me. Um, we say that to Krishna, we pray that um, please engage me in your service. Is that when we start the japa or can we do it in between? Because when the mind goes, I tend to say, oh Krishna, please help. Um, and is that how we do it or is that a break in the japa? Uh, that's, that's what the japa is actually saying. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives the understanding that Jap is a prayer along with the chanting of the name. The prayer is there and that prayer is, please dear Lord, engage me in your service. That's what the Chapa actually is indicating when you're chanting. So um, if you say that in your mind, it's not, it's not, it's not wrong, but it's not like you have to say it every minute. Yeah. It's nice. But when the mind goes off, that's when you realize and you bring it back and you say, oh, please help. I'm going off the track. Engage me in your service. And then, I continue, and then I continue doing the japa. But is that a break like a japa or we can continue? It's not really a break. It's just helping you to chant better. That's all. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. But not too often. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. You want to concentrate on the sound. Anyone else? Okay, maybe we can stop here. It's getting to the hour. So, so as we mentioned, tomorrow is the holy day. It's the appearance of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. And so we'll be giving a class exclusively and we'll be revealing something very 
unique in that class, which I hope all of you will come on and hear because you'll find it very, very inspiring. Okay, and of course, uh, work on your japa, read about the importance of chanting, hear from devotees who speak classes about chan chanting. You can't get enough information on chanting. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. So, Madhuratri, when you're coming back, thank you so much. When you're coming back, so Madhuratri. Uh, Friday morning. Friday morning, okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madhavananda. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very, very much. Be back. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We'll see you all.